in the news while we've been away, there's a shock for Kenneth Clark when he's invited onto the Today programme on April Fool's Day. <laughs> Uh, Paul and Eddie, what's this uh, tale of woe? Can I just say that I now know where the tub of lard went. <laughs> <laughs> the government claimed that the opposition had distorted the truth and John Major declared that the Labour Party are alarming people. Well, I suppose Margaret Beckett's hairstyle is slightly alarming. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Not compared to some. <laughs> dangerous ground when we start talking about hair. Really. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can't help it, it's a disability with him, you're doing it on purpose. Yeah. Right? Um, I have the option. Yes, okay, thank you girls. Um, <laughs> that's all right, miss. <laughs> the, Says TV's Mr. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> We're turning as we traditionally do at this stage to the second round and the dubious world of tabloid headlines. <laughs> now he looks like Melvin Bragg. <laughs> Her name was Chesty Love. No, I think it was, wasn't it, L.A. Bust? L.A. <laughs> Bust. Or was it Melissa Mounds? Uh, I'm confused. You're, uh, you're reading out your own address book, aren't you? Was um, it, um... <laughs> I'm, afraid, uh, I'm afraid Paul was completely right. It was actually Chesty Love. But he doesn't get a point. He doesn't steal my point, does he? He's sitting over there with his foppish head. He doesn't take my point. <laughs> I had to study it in the kind of sad, lonely, loser's way and remember the names, does he? I mean, I got the story right, Angus. I mean, it's what, just by reading it out? Lay down the parameters. Oh, no, I knew the story. The breasts were enhanced. She got away with it and just didn't happen to slip the name in before old Big Mouth over there <laughs> blurted it out. And you're going to give him my point now. And you think that's fair, do you, Mr. Smarmy Git? <laughs> Jonathan's exactly. very overexcited. He hasn't been on a real channel before. <laughs> Elvis Presley, oh, yeah. the Crankies, oh, yeah. Ming the Merciless, Emperor of Mongo, and former UN Secretary General Perez de Cuellar. Um, <laughs> Paul might know the answer to this. I think I do, actually. Right, keep it to yourself, Dave. <laughs> there was a story that Perez de Cuellar had, had been ab abducted by aliens. That's right. And... Um, <laughs> Abducted by aliens. You can't just and get... the others and uh... there's, a, there's a sort of group in America that think that he was kidnapped by aliens and sort of like examined and then brought back. So I imagine that they I mean they, there's some people who think that Elvis Presley lives on Saturn. Um, there's some people who think that Cranky should be sent to Mars. So <laughs> I imagine the odd one out is the Emperor Ming, because all the other ones have been connected with I mean they probably sort of think, oh we saw a UFO or we once went to another planet and we were abducted by aliens, and the only one who hasn't claimed that is uh, the Ming there, played by the actor Charles Middleton. <laughs> you know what? If you're not telling the jokes, you're crashing bloody bored. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to get stuck in a lift with you. You run out um, the tear and it's like, do you remember who played Ming the Merciless in the 1925 <laughs> Universal RKO serial? Is this a man, is this a man who hosted a programme called Fantastic <laughs> Facts? <laughs> Fantastic fact being, how on earth did this programme ever get made? <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, guest publication this week, from which one or two headlines are taken, or maybe three, who knows, that's how exciting it is, <laughs> is, uh, is none other than the revered arthritis news. <laughs> so the Scots turned down chance to wall themselves. Is it turned to opera? Paul? Suddenly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I seem to remember basic polite manners <laughs> means that we should stop talking for at least more than a nanosecond before you jump in with well, your dull but correct answer. I'll be here till Tuesday. <laughs> uh, Sober Scots turned down whatever Paul said. It is, uh, <laughs> it Sober is, Scots uh, turned down volume when boring Merton gives the correct answer. <laughs> It is, it is generally accepted form that once you've had 94 guesses, <laughs> how the other team can leap in. Uh, to opera is the right answer. Uh, <laughs> Creates new government post? Very properly, yes. <laughs> Very properly. I wouldn't be at all surprised if that actually is uh, the really answer. Well. I don't know why you put a question mark at the end of your little <laughs> statement then. You know full well it's white and you're going to get a bloody point, aren't you? Yes, all right. All right. I, just, I just thought I'd put an air of mystery into it. Yeah. <laughs> Northern Ireland right. welcomes what? Um, careful psychopaths. <laughs> Tourists who don't read the newspapers or watch television. 
stupid Americans with a lot of money. Uh, is not New right. New arthritis clinic. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it's not a bad guess. Arthritis care is actually oh, the answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sorry, but <laughs> there comes a time for what even you have to admit that the fact that you plow to arthritis <laughs> weekly, <laughs> just so you can win a what is nothing more than a dressed up parlour game, is deeply sad. <laughs> point out that I know these as well. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Britain has more what than people? Socks. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> or logically yeah. Yeah. Two. Or teeth. Oh, yeah. Teeth. Or rats. rats. Toasters is in fact an inspired answer. Completely right. Uh, next. Have more rats. And don't forget there's only ten points in it. Uh, next. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like fun. <laughs> what do you think, rabbit eyes? <laughs> I don't know, Donkey Dick. Um, I think it's, um, uh, I think... <laughs> I think it's... it's Can I say you're looking particularly nice tonight? <laughs> Thank you very much. That's very nice. <laughs> Cheap victory. It's this people, isn't it? Because we had Mr. Mm. Sad last week, and it's Mr. and Mrs. Fussy this week. Who were sort of who uh, have a lot of problems with noises from their next door neighbours? There was one neighbour had a sort of fountain, and they complained about the noise of that. And somebody else had a dog, and the lead scraping against the kennel was making a bit of a noise. And you made that bit up. No, no. Really? Yeah, it's true. Mm. Yeah. You got the same papers in your head. I can't read. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's decoration. That's what I like. And uh, they can. Gardening world. <laughs> this is. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they You're think, a fine one. Don't think that it isn't. But, um, on. And at one point... <laughs> sorry, a little lover's tiff, Kate. Um, sorry, Paul, what were you saying? <laughs> and he complained about this guy next door who's got these budgies, and the budgies were making a lot of noise, and they took him to court. What I would have done, I'd have wound the neighbours up even more. I'd have fixed tiny little megaphones to the front of the budgie's beaks, like that. So in the morning, you just hear this sort of cheep. <laughs> That's what I would have done. Mm. But they took him to court and they lost. I don't know who Jackie Greaves is. It's not Jimmy Greaves or a sex chain, is it? Um, I know who Jackie Greaves is. Is it something to do with... Uh, I said I know who Jackie Greaves is. <laughs> Good for you. Is yeah. it something to do with compensation of some kind? Not quite. The odd one out is um, the mirror pensioners. For what reason? Don't know. <laughs> Jackie Greaves was the woman who was found um, in a hole of ice. She'd built herself in and then she was rescued. Oh. This man looked over the fence. He's a neighbour of Fred West's. Um, not a very good friend, I gather. But um, right. looked over the fence. That's um, well, Nancy Kerrigan. Yes, I told you that. <laughs> I think the link they is... they all stories to the paper apart from the mirror pensioners? That is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I might give one to each of you, as it were. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's that uh, all have profited from misfortune, except uh, for the mirror group pensioners from whose misfortune others have profited. Uh, mentioning their Maxwell's uh, names. Uh, the BBC are in fact cracking down on references to Ian and Kevin Maxwell just in case programme makers appear biased in their treatment of these two heartless scheming bastards. No, it's not that. It's not that at all. Ooh. I'm lying. It's not. It's, she is... She is the... Um, Which one? Her, Diana, yeah. is... Um, <laughs> don't start. Actually, because I'm trying. Shut your face. <laughs> you can yeah. keep it up. Yeah, I can't keep it up. Well, yeah, I know that. I knew it was a mistake. <laughs> oh, no, she is, Where were you to our past this oh, morning? Oh, just because I'm trying to answer the question, well, the nice man is asking me. <laughs> She's the president of Relate, isn't she? Of the marriage guidance mm -hmm. thing. Isn't the Relate marriage guidance thing? You might learn something. Thank she, you. She, Thank you. Look, the, uh, he, she, she. Oh, <laughs> I've been sponsored by She magazine. Yes, I have. Yeah, we'll go on, get on with it. Then. What packs out Wembley? Barbara Streisand. Is not the right answer, <laughs> and it's not your question anyway. A Babs Streisand. Barbara's nose? No, it's not Barbara or Babs Paul Streisand. Uh, it's not Paul Merton, no, that was the London Palladium. Oh, right. And he only half filled it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. 
couldn't care less. <laughs> oh dear, he's not playing anymore. Um, <laughs> back to basics for what? Uh, back to basics for um, British hairdressing industry. Hairdressers' health is actually the answer. I'll give you one for that. Why? Uh, well, I mentioned hairdressing. I, I panicked. It's in there. Uh, <laughs> Next, uh, everybody's miserable except us. Say who? Say sugar sweet couple sitting opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Ian and Kathy. Why are you wearing that suit? It looks like you're auditioning for a Merchant Ivory film. <laughs> you won't get it. <coughs> uh, I could see you from the nipple down. I mean, you have this reputation of you being the great sex god, but we've never, I mean, we don't know. You might have padded underwear, you might, might have sandals and socks on under there. I mean, isn't it true, Caroline? How can we tell if he's a sex god? <coughs> oh, I see. <laughs> anyway, sorry, where were we? Um, have we? Which uh, Idle Whimsy brings us uh, meandering to the end of tonight's War of Words. And the sad story is that this week's uh, April Fools are Paul and Caroline with 14, and this week's May Flowers are Ian and Kathy with 21. Mm. not the winning that's important, Paul. It's the look on your face when you lose. <laughs> you know, after seven series, I still haven't got used to the experience. <laughs> I was chained up just like an animal. Oh, yes, this is a rather misleading uh, headline, in fact. It's the story of the uh, woman who was under arrest and, and suddenly went into childbirth and, and, had, to be, and had to give birth while um, handcuffed. Is that it? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Who said comedy was dead? Is <laughs> <laughs> it in Mexico or somewhere like that? And um, these animal smugglers were the victims of a sting uh, because an undercover agent dressed up in a gorilla suit and then <laughs> sold himself to them. And they're also not, not, very ex not very expert animal smugglers because they fell for this and they bought this chap and he immediately leapt out of his suit and arrested them. <laughs> I think their defence is they, they, they say we're only interested in buying men in gorilla suits and not animals at all. <laughs> you may think that Paul and Francis are on drugs, but it's absolutely <laughs> right. That is right, and we are on drugs. And right. <laughs> it is. Uh, There's it anyone is... I can put up with you, you great ponce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a truth drug, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Percival Power being a, a recent product which has been tested, and they say it uh, allegedly, if we can re revert to that famous word. What do they say? That it rots clothes and makes holes in them. Now, we don't know what they tested it on. We don't know what underwear they tested it on. If they tested it on Madonna's underwear, they are open crotch and supposed to have holes in them. <laughs> <laughs> if they tested it How on do the. you know that? Oh, it's a well known fact within show business. Once you've been in show business a little longer, you'll find out these things. <laughs> And, uh, He's never been in show business in his life. <laughs> He's trying to get longer. in, Paul. He, he, had a, he had a go of a Punch and Judy act in Bournemouth about two years ago that died on its arse. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't. You laughed. <laughs> Only when you got arrested by the police. <laughs> He's needing that many puppets. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, uh, a bizarre quartet for you. Erich von Stroheim, George Eliot, Mayor Barry of Washington, and John Wayne. Well, uh, George Eliot and um, uh, Mayor Barry uh, had a date. And they went to a restaurant, <laughs> <laughs> and they started off with some. They started off with uh, a little bit of steak and stuff. And suddenly, Eric von Stroheim came in, <laughs> and George Eliot said, "I am Eric. How are you?" Because they were old friends. They used to know each other in the old days. And he said, "Well, look, when you finished your meal, when I come back to our place for a cup of coffee." So Mayor Barry and George Eliot and Eric von Stroheim all went back to Eric's place and had a coffee. And then he said, look, "I've got some cocaine." He said, "Do you want some?" So he said, "All right." So they had some. And after about an hour, Mayor Barry. He said, let's have a free in the bed romp. <laughs> so they started having this wild sex. There was a knock at the door, and it's John Wayne. <laughs> he said, look, can you keep the noise down? So they started, they, they said, now come on, John, you know, have some cocaine. So he had some cocaine, and after a while, he started talking about things. And John Wayne said, you know, my name isn't really John Wayne, he said. My real name is Marion. 
And, and, that, and, and Mayor Barry said, that's funny, cos that's my name as well. My name's Marion as well. And George Elliot was sitting there in a skirt, says, well, look, don't get any funny ideas about me, because I'm not actually George Elliot. My name is uh, possibly Marion as well. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Avon Stroheim said, well, you don't think I was born with a name like that, do you? No, 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 my name's not Avon Stroheim, it's Zhonglan uh, van Plukendekel or something. <laughs> <laughs> and so the odd one out is Mayor Barry, because he's the only one who hasn't changed his name. Absolutely right. No. <laughs> She yeah. does look as though she's in drag, doesn't she? Mm. It's like a bouncer at a nightclub. <laughs> queen Victoria, yeah. <laughs> Can't come in here, mate. I'm the Queen, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> look You're at that penny. That's me on there. Go on, clear off. <laughs> uh, next, what threat to male fertility? Potato. Is the right answer. <laughs> 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 it was that or Portillo. <laughs> it is, yes, the ceremonial opening of the Channel Tunnel. Did you watch it? Yes, I was transfixed by it, Angus. Mm. Yeah. It was marvellous. You didn't well, see you it, You're just here to you? chat to me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you do. It's lonely. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Just, uh, I did you watch it? it yeah, I did. I yes. It's good fun. Come round to my Did house anyone else watch it? it? <laughs> did you watch it, Ian? No, I didn't. Oh, right. Why not? I've no idea. I may have been working. What? <laughs> Obviously lying. Um, <laughs> yes, it is the ceremonial opening of the channel. I watched it. <laughs> he didn't ask me, did he? No. no. I was my first time on this show. You'd think you'd ask me, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, you'd think you'd be the first one to ask. You I would have thought so. That would have been show. nice. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been a thoughtful thing to have done. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, bring me in on it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go now if you want. <laughs> Jack, did you watch it? I did, Angus. Did yeah, you? I watched it, yeah. Uh, was it any good? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> the reason it was a story, or so they pretended, was because this man, Brown, was sharing a boyfriend with a civil servant who had access to defence secrets. And the boyfriend, who I think his name was Peter Martin. No, oh, Paul, Paul Martin. Paul Martin. Martin. Mm. Which is the real name of a well-known top comic. Mm. <laughs> Didn't you used to be a civil servant? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realise it was something I had to admit to in public. <laughs> Jack, another... Uh, where are you? Over there. Jack. Yes. Another... Uh, I've been here all evening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, another... How do you get ink out of formaldehyde? I don't know, Tony. It's well, a... I can tell you. <laughs> First of all, you need a jug of ordinary yeah. water. <laughs> I'll show you here. Yeah. Um, that's secondly, you need a sheep. That's the sheep <laughs> in there, right? Right. And then you just do that with a special magic solution. And hey, presto, it's whiter than white. Suddenly sounding Something like an imperial leather commercial. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I, I hope we're not going to get into commercials. <laughs> well, Three uh, out of four men on this panel. <laughs> Why, who, who hasn't money? done an advert? I'm afraid I haven't, Jack. You've done what? an advert on Romanian television for step ladders. What are you going on? <laughs> Can't quite reach the light bulb, then use the handy treader step. <laughs> uh, Ian, something of a rogues gallery for you. Malaysian Prime Minister Dr Mahathir, uh, Margaret Thatcher, they go between Mr Armagam and a spam fritter. What's happening here? <laughs> and David Miller, Ian McGregor, a half-empty canary wharf, and Guinness fraudster Ernest Saunders. <laughs> Plus Terry Bangles, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, Brazilian fascist Hernan Bushi, Mark Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> and His Holiness the Pope. Uh, let's ne negotiate the points on this <laughs> if, if we get this right, yeah. can we have ten points? Each. Um, no. <laughs> Is it a spam fritter? <laughs> Is it your question? No. <laughs> We got that one right. Give him ten points. <laughs> <laughs> he usually do. Oh dear. Here we go. Um, personnel officers are a waste of time. Well, uh, personnel officers are a waste of time. 
know well, that. If, you, <laughs> if you sort of send a personal officer down the shops to get you some fags or something, they'll come back with a lawnmower or something. <laughs> <laughs> and they are a waste of time. You don't know the answer to this one, do you? <laughs> it's self-evident. Uh, not as such. Uh, it's, well, it's a good, I was going to say a good answer. It's actually exactly the same as the question, isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, <laughs> is there uh, a any survey? Any idea over here? Well, it's is obviously it, a survey, uh, a study that's decided that personnel officers are a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know there, any other way of putting it, really. No, yeah. no evidently. They because... are not um, as mm. good as they could be. <laughs> <laughs> they take a certain amount of time, but the bit of time they take <laughs> is wasted. <laughs> Is this the one about the Sorry. parrot on amphetamines? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, reading between the lines somewhat, isn't it? Um, it's a parrot on amphetamines, and the only thing it can say is personal officers are... <laughs> <laughs> but very quickly. And the neighbours are totally fed up with yeah. this boring parrot saying personal officers are a waste of time. Yeah. The huge court case. Mm, yeah. mm. It's not 100% true. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but then what is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's getting rather philosophical now. Um, You've never always... been a personnel officer, have you? Uh, my brother has been. Mm. Well, he is, actually. Really? Mm. So you wasted time? <laughs> <laughs> What's your brother's name? Bill. Bill. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, we have to be getting on. Um, <laughs> ironically, the government is now employing thousands of personnel managers oh, in hospitals. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, oh, we, were, we were right and we said it was a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got any pictures of him? <laughs> um, no, not on me. No, it's a suit you're looking at. Have you got any pictures yeah. of him? <laughs> no. Well, I, I think have this is home, the most boring obviously. round we've ever had on this. Uh, <laughs> it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have been Bill if you'd been the oldest? <laughs> or not? I probably would actually yeah, be, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yes. You're not actually called Hugh, are you, Hugh? No, I'm not called Hugh. <laughs> What's your real name? Pete. <laughs> Pete? I thought about Bill, but I didn't like him. <laughs> Have you got a brother called Dennis? Dennis Dennis. Yeah. Because <laughs> Duran Duran had sort of the same thing. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we still don't <laughs> say. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, I think the answer is that personal <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. of time. Thank you. Thanks to this law, uh, one Stephen Newson, a six foot four crazed paranoid psychopath, is now a free man and could be anywhere in the country. And if he is anywhere in the London area, Ian and Paul both live in Battersea. So <laughs> <laughs> does Angus some nights. <laughs> I didn't know he was knocking off your missus as well. <laughs> not, uh, not yet, anyway. Um, <laughs> sends a love, by the way. Uh, <laughs> what, Stop. to be stepped up? Ladder. Ladders. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who was first? Uh, it doesn't matter who was first, because neither were right. Um, <laughs> the electrical industry... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I'd it's... hate to see a man struggling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> unless it's Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and unless you're just about to win. Oh. Um, Noddy and Biggie's fine decapitated head in cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> Puppet squad, yeah. nobody move. Um, yes, it is, uh, it is the now official, apparently, uh, Labour leadership contest. Uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown have already been dubbed within the Labour Party the beautiful people. And then given their main rivals are Margaret Beckett and Robin Cook, it's not that surprising. <laughs> They're Tony... not auditioning for Baywatch, Angus. It's <laughs> <laughs> the job to lead the Labour Party. Well, they're the ones who are dubbed the beautiful people. I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. No, you carry on with your lookist rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Go on, say Robin Cook looks like a garden gnome. I bet that's coming up. <laughs> Robin Cook, of course, looks like a garden gnome. <laughs> and that's why, that's why the crime rate in Islington was, was, was at that time the lowest in the United Kingdom. And then they discovered space at that time. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> there, there, um,
Isabel Mooney is responsible for you. Well, she wouldn't ever claim that. But she did a good job there. I thought that. I've always been very grateful for her, and it's the first time I've been able to do it. The public tribute. I mean, I haven't let her know I'm doing so. They suddenly want them to build the motorway over her head. <laughs> no, no, they, they wanted to bring it back to Islington. Right. Because that's where she wrote it from. <laughs> and do a small statue. Outside. <laughs> Somebody under my desk! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Rhodes... Cast, cast your mind back half an hour. Um, That's very dangerous. There was a question. Um, oh, no, no. <laughs> it's a sad sight, isn't it? This, this mild man Ironic. appealing to the most basic instincts he can find. Bloody beggars on the streets! Lock them up! Is that worth a vote? Is it worth, worth a, a slap round the face? <laughs> and you're the man to do it <laughs> yeah. here. Off you go. Have a fight with him. Mm. Have a fight and get it on television. <laughs> do you want to fight, Prime Minister? Well, I might and I might not. <laughs> I can't commit myself at this stage <laughs> to a fight. He's given a lawnmower a scene to there, isn't he? <laughs> I reckon he should get the father drunk and go for a full house. <laughs> what a bunch of slappers, honestly. <laughs> Don't you think that when they flew in, thought, sad old cook old and a couple of hard-faced slappers. But it is the one thing that Bill Clinton and Alan Clark have in common. They both like flashing, don't they? Well, I'm, I'm for old Clarky, you know. I mean, it, it takes a lot to make one sympathise with Alan Clark. But this pathetic lunatic judge, you know he wasn't allowed citizenship in South Africa because he's too right-wing for them. <laughs> <laughs> he's a member of the Monday Club over here. He mm. disappears off to South Africa. Fourteen years later, he comes back because his wife and both daughters have had it away with Clark, saying, I'm looking for justice. <laughs> Bloody whites coming over here. <laughs> It is about uh, Judge James Harkus, whose uh, wife and daughters were all seduced by uh, former Conservative Minister Alan Clark. A daughter Josephine described the ghastly ordeal. All I got were a few minutes of sex. I remember him leaving and I can remember feeling dirty. He made me feel like a dog. There was no tenderness, no love. He came around the next night and I slept with him. <laughs> Australians have a word for that. Yes. It's called dag. A bit of shit that hangs off the back of a sheep's <laughs> arm. The Australians, well, they get a word for anything. Dag. Mm. And I didn't know he was bilingual, did you? Astonishing. And don't forget, you heard it here first. <laughs> uh, Unless they're watching the repeat. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching the repeat, you heard it here second. Uh, yes. But no, they might not have seen the first show. <laughs> Sorry, you did see it here first, <laughs> uh, And he said, look, if you want a train, go and live in the city. Don't hang around in Norfolk expecting a train. <laughs> Out in the middle of the countryside by a big platform saying station. We don't have trains there. We have trains from my office to five minutes away to another fat idiot's office. <laughs> uh, Paul, your figures of fun are Tony Hancock, Peter Sellers, Sir Arthur Bomber Harris and Nelson Mandela. Well, um, Tony Hancock and Peter Sellers once appeared in the same film, a film called Orders is Orders, made in 1955, and Gorton Simpson has written... Uh, Did written have Charles Middleton in it, by the way? No. Oh, right. No, he died in 1949. Oh, right. One of the main Christ reasons why he wasn't in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> they were willing to audition him, but nobody had a spade. <laughs> so... Gordon and Simpson have written for Hancock and they've also written for Peter Sellers a film called The Wrong Arm of the Law, made in 1963. Um, Nelson Mandela appeared in a film written by Gordon and Simpson that was never released, unfortunately, um, called Let Me Out. <laughs> and Bomber so Harris is on the phone there, so I think the odd one out is Peter Sellers, because he's the only one who hasn't had a statue put up to him. Which I is... <laughs> Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis was born in London and became an Irish citizen at the age of 30. He recently denied that he had started to affect his Irishness, although he was wearing a green suit and carrying a pig under his arm at the time. <laughs> uh, Andy Wait, Townsend... Hang on a minute. What's, why should the Irish people be carrying a pig under their arm? <laughs> it's just uh, one of those things, Paul. It's called racism, isn't it? <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just one of those things they do. Go and fly and they're all doing it. 
<laughs> I've never seen anybody doing that in Ireland. Have you ever seen anybody doing that? Most no, of the pigs in the West Midlands, Midlands have an Irishman under their arm. If, if there is somebody who's seen it. Uh, Andy Townsend, if you're in the gun under their arm. <laughs> It's just one of those things, Paul. It's just a little, <laughs> little caricature that people paint of uh, certain nationalities, you know, like Scotsmen in kilts or... Oh, you're uh, right. It is racism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, Kinnock's got a it's, leak on his head. That's right. Can see it? Angus, now there's a Scottish name. Yep. That How means bizarre. he must be very, very, very mean. <laughs> And he's got a haggis under his arm all the time. I've actually uh, so got a point on the first count. <laughs> I have an English father and a Scottish mother, which ah. means that I'm both stuck up and mean. <laughs> Just and extremely right well dressed. Now. Yes, thank you very much. Carry on, um, skirty transvestite. <laughs> 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 I bet you've got a dagger in your sock, have you? <laughs> so my mother's Irish, so, so, so should I walk around with half a pound of sausages under me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's up to you. Huh? I'd go for the full pig, actually. Mm. <coughs> what are you doing Monty? tonight? <laughs> Already when you were on your knees in my dressing room that I was busy. If, if you don't pick those up, you get your comedy card taken away. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. What could I do? A pathetic excuse. I, I, I immediately apologise. Yeah. This is the that. man who's just taken the high moral line on racism. <laughs> I never said I was consistent. Wait, excuse me. Excuse me, are you saying it's immoral to ask me out later? Yeah, I'd classify that as such. <laughs> I think it's I charming. Really I've got a date. I don't care what he calls me. I've got a date. <laughs> Andy Town. I'm just dating agency. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Portillo may go what? Away, I hope. <laughs> Nova. Uh, go for gold. <laughs> so the shops may back. go. <laughs> 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 what must overcome their apathy? I don't care. Voters. <laughs> It's probably something like laundromats or something, <laughs> or dry cleaners. Is the right answer. <laughs> Obviously a keen fan of laundry and cleaning news <laughs> international. Why are they apathetic? Well, if uh, you go in with a suit, they just say no. <laughs> Can you come back come tomorrow? Oh, I can't. <laughs> well, Not that's trousers. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, with only five points in it. Incredibly exciting. Right, here we go. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, is the big one, Mariella. Next, uh, as Alan Clark would say, uh, next... <laughs> does bring a whole new meaning to the phrase, how's your father, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, all of which ministerial fumblings bring us embarrassingly to the end of the round, not to say the com competent, but I think I might do this again. Uh, all of which uh, ministerial fumblings bring us embarrassingly to the end of the round, to say nothing of the contest, which seems entirely justified. And a shifty glance downwards at the luminous digits re re reveals that this week's uh, grumpy old men are Ian and Mar Mariella with 16. <laughs> What is your first language, by the way? <laughs> Icelandic, I'll say. Have another go at it. Nobody noticed. Uh, and a shifty glass down... glance... <laughs> <laughs> a shifty glass is what I had before the show. Which is, uh, Has anyone got a talkative three-year-old in the audience? <laughs> And with Paul, we were hoping to be joined by a tub of lard, but unfortunately it pulled out at the last minute. So instead we just went out onto the street and grabbed the nearest passerby, along with his nine bodyguards, Salman Rushdie. Church. There's the steeple. Look inside, there's the people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bull tempering. That's a mad <laughs> Ray Illingworth. I think this is Raymond Illingworth's bid to clean up the England cricket team by banning such awful things as coloured specs and mobile phones and designer watches at God, of course. Because mm. mm -hmm. he, he banned God, or at least the God's chaplain, from the dressing room. Yeah. I think there's not much to be said about that. He should be sentenced to death. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> popular, <Yes>. popular taste? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you want to win it tonight, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this was your chance to offend another religion, of course. 
<laughs> it's another Tory poster in which they use James Dean and, and apparently in America, dead people are allowed to sue for defamation. Mm. Let's mm. Trouble for some of us. Yeah. <laughs> Four of them were members of the Conservative Party. <laughs> no, Charles is SWP. <laughs> National Law Party, isn't it? Yes, yogic flying with Charles. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's the first impersonation Ian has ever done on this. Oh. <laughs> He's done a few. Done a few. Oh, I got a few. Yeah. He does a really good <laughs> Nana Mascori. <laughs> I oh, do a really good Jerry Adams. <laughs> the odd one out is uh, Prince Charles, as the other three have between them been pelted with the various ingredients of a quiche. <laughs> um, <laughs> now you say it, <laughs> then... it stares you in the face. It does, it, it does. does. It's a cookery thing. Yeah. yeah. Seems so obvious, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Namely, eggs, flour and tomatoes. Uh, John Major won the last election after having eggs thrown at him. Of course, strictly speaking, you also need a large metal dish to make a quiche. So if there are any students watching, do bear this in mind next time you're in your area. <laughs> do you get a point for picking out Prince Charles as the odd one out? Yeah, strictly speaking, I, I suppose you do, really, point. yes. Yeah, but it's not your go. Oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, and you should get out more. You're a bit antisocial. <laughs> Do you me? Um, Going yes. to wear nice violities this year. <laughs> the bathroom. <laughs> Certainly, when she was with John Lennon, she took. Um, she, Sorry, she took. Are we out... keeping you up, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> the great ponce. <laughs> They've all talked from the grave. Yeah, they've all, they're all mm. dead. And what, they sent you? messages. So Matt mm. Busby apparently sent a message saying England was going to beat Denmark, and he was right. Apparently. God, it must be fascinating, the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> if you're still interested in football. Yeah. <laughs> like being with Angus for eternity. <laughs> football. <laughs> <laughs>